Hello YouTube, I'm Sam Sheehan, Senior Staff Writer at Autocar. If you read the magazine, you may have seen my name in the pages there, or if you watch the onboard at Spa with the Focus RS, that was me driving. Uh, I'm back in a hot Ford again, but this time it's a Fiesta ST200, the spiciest car in the current Fiesta range. It's got 197 brake horsepower, can do 0-60 to in 6.7 seconds. It's actually our favourite car that you can buy for under £25,000. It beat the likes of the Clio RS 220 and a Mazda MX-5 um, and it won our under 25k performance car test. My colleagues actually gave the car a 4.5 star rating and I can see why it's, it's so much fun to drive, even on sodden Welsh roads like this. Not got as much talk of some of its rivals, but the engine is really happy to rev, which makes it really pleasing to drive, especially considering it's turbocharged. The whole chassis is really buzzy, and you can get a little bit of movement from the rear axle, but not too much, actually. It's, it's more stable than I thought it would be on slippery roads like this. The gearbox for they're just so good at making gearboxes, aren't they? I mean, it's so easy to use, and you can see it's been engineered by people who love driving. The steering, it's light and yeah, there's not masses of feel, but it just feels so responsive and it makes this whole chassis feel so complete. It's little wonder that we think the ST200 is the best under 25k performance car, but is it really the most fun you can have on that budget? This is a Renault Zoe, but it's not just any Zoe, it's an all-electric rally car, and that is a go-kart, probably the cheapest way to have fun behind the wheel. We're here at Glanigore's racetrack in North Wales, let's find out which is most fun. What an unusual office this is. I'm sat behind the wheel of a Renault rally car, but as you can probably hear, or probably not hear actually, it's powered by electric motors, that's because this is a Renault Zoe. It's a car that's been built by uh, E-Rally Motorsport Limited and uh, it's been designed and built as a junior rally car, so it's for uh, teenagers to use. So that means that it's been built on a budget. This particular car is a first ever Renault Zoe junior rally car, so it's a prototype and it cost, whoa, <laughs> it cost 18,000 pounds. That's including purchase of this, which was a used car. E-Rally wants to turn these things um, out and produce them for a E-Rally series. They're hoping to produce these cars for as little as £10,000. That's with some championship subsidy. And as you can probably tell, this thing is amazing to drive. You look at it and you think, that's a Renault Zoe, no, I'm not going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to be honest with you, it's one of the most fun things I've ever driven. And one of the most capable things I've ever driven. The way that this car's been set up is very neutral, but there's minimal changes. They've changed the suspension, there's obviously some, uh, they're not semi-stick tyres, they're like a gravel tyre, I think. And, uh, it means you've got really planted, chassis. The engine, or sorry, the motor I should say, is completely standard. So we've still got an 88 brake horsepower electric motor driving the front wheels. Nothing has been changed in terms of the powertrain. E-Rally reckons they've taken about 100 kilograms out of this car, but it's still wearing things like door panels, it's still got an infotainment system, there's still, you know, all the electric wires and everything for GPS. So this car does 0-60 uh, in standard trim in 13.5 seconds. That's not quick. But for some reason, down the straight, the linear power band it actually is pretty quick. We're doing, here we go, we're going to turn in at 62, I think that was nearly. Which you might think, oh, it's not that quick, but it's a tiny cart straight, you know. And I don't think the Fiesta will be getting up to much more than that. I haven't had the uh, guts to look at the Fiesta Speedo yet because the Fiesta is so much more nervous into that first corner. And this, it's set up so neutral and nice. You can carry a lot of speed in and, and you know, you've got time to look ahead at the next corner. The Fiesta, you're very much focused on not rotating. That's what makes the Fiesta so much fun, to be fair, is the fact that it's got such an agile rear, rear axle. But it does mean you have to have your wits about you at high speed. <laughs> it's so physical. Christ, I don't need to go to the gym after this one. To be fair, I'd be very surprised if the Fiesta is quicker than this. I think the combination of the tyres, me being more confident in this, the commitment that I can carry into some of the corners, Tesla has shown that you can have fun, fast electric cars. But we haven't actually had any affordable fun electric cars, really. Not stuff that's, you know, on the level of the Fiesta ST. But this, this just is, isn't it? You could, you could wind it back, you could put the rear seats back in, you could put the speakers back in, and the potential is there. It, it shows that an electric motor isn't a hindrance, and it has its own benefits, and yeah, its own character.
I think the fact that this ST with its five seats, road tires, and pretty comfortable suspension setup is in the fight with a track prep to a rally prep Zoe, as odd as the Zoe may be, as unconventional as the Zoe may be, it's a supremely, supremely effective machine. Tiny machine, built for kids, but talented motorsport license holding kids. This thing, on the other hand, is for you and I. This thing is for the average boy or girl who wants a fun car that can take him to the shops and back. It turns out this one can also do this. <laughs> Whoa. This one can be filled with shopping, but it can also lift the wheel at, I don't know how much, man, how many miles an hour, but enough to, to get me slightly scared. <laughs> but in a good way. Straight away, there's so much more lock needed, but the rear wheel is up in the air as well in the Fiesta, which means there's actually quite a lot of similarity with the Zoe. In the sense that you turn in with the brakes trailed and the line is tightened. Going on the brakes off the throttle, there's the rear coming around, help me tighten the line. Like this thing is just so agile on the rear, it's fantastic. Ford's actually taken out a little bit of stiffness from the rear suspension because of this uh, stiffer torsion bar. But it means that the car doesn't feel any more stiffly sprung, it's not. Yet, there's a little bit more agility. So this was the most fun bit in the Zoe. What's it like in the Fiesta? A little bit scary, but still, still epic fun. <laughs> For me, this is, this is as good as it gets, especially front wheel drive. I mean, you know, the go-kart rear driven thing, and any rear-driven sports car, it's lovely to have that adjustability with the rear axle. But, you know, we all know that to get a sports car in this price bracket, you're going to have to sacrifice some power. Because to develop most of those sports cars in that bracket, you know, the MX-5 is a standout example. It just doesn't have this straight line speed. We're going down the straight, look at us, we're powering up to 80 mile an hour. I'm going to leave it in third. Hold on the brakes into this hairpin. The brakes are so strong on this car, they're fantastic. It's just around here, the Zoe's nose was so much more planted and that's where the body roll really hampers you. It's this thing, was it 20, over 22,000 pounds, only 23,000 pounds. It's quite a lot of money and obviously some people would say, oh yeah, you know, you can just remap your normal ST and have more power with a mounting kit. And yeah, that may be the case, but resale and also long-term ownership, this is gonna be the one that carries the value, isn't it? So you're gonna get a bit of everything. You're gonna have this fun, track ready chassis and engine but you've also got something that is not going to lose its value not going to just drop off the uh, face of the earth with its resale value because so few of these are being made behind the wheel of that zoe i thought this thing would have no chance but right now i don't know this is close this thing is so much quicker down the straights 213 pound foot of torque it's not Massively torque heavy, but the engine is just so free revving. Mitch, our video guy, and Luke, snapper. I've actually got enough footage, I think, for them uh, right now, but don't tell them. I'm just going to stay out here a bit longer. Our rental go-kart, with its 270cc four-stroke engine, wasn't particularly fast in a straight line, but almost every corner could be taken with a quick dab of the brakes, meaning more than 90% of the lap was spent with my right foot pressed against the front bumper. Top speed barely surpassed 45 mile an hour along the straight, leaving both of the cars to pull ahead, but the first corner, which is more like a right kink, could be taken full throttle with ease. The same could be said for most of the other corners, so despite the fact it only has 13.5 horsepower, a surplus of grip meant every single one of those horses was called into use for the lap's entirety. This is going to be close. In the end, we managed to time a dry lap for all three vehicles. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the ST200 was comfortably the fastest. Next was the go-kart, which crossed the line in 57.25 seconds, leaving the Zoe in third, but just one second behind with its 58.3 second lap. So was the fastest car also the most fun to drive? In short, yes. Of course the Zoe is a remarkable car. It's impressive that it even came close to a car as focused as the ST200. Nothing can come close to the go-kart for ultimate connection with the road. But with just 13.5 horsepower on offer, the rental car was always going to struggle in this company. Its lap time, however, speaks for itself. But when it comes down to it, the ST200 is undoubtedly our sub 25k king. Fast, buzzing with energy and supremely agile, it's a car for the drivers, and for that reason it should be celebrated.